welcome to any visitors uh, who may be worshipping with us as usual, or with tea and coffee and the service you can see on this side. Um, so um, don't rush away, uh, please stay back and have a cup of tea and coffee. Um, there are a couple of things that I need to, to mention. Uh, first of all, um, most of the intimations that are up there and the people have asked for prayers, please do remember those who are mentioned in these slides uh, in your uh, personal and family prayers. Um, one thing on Wednesday morning, uh, there will be a funeral here in this hall uh, for uh, Vina, and uh, so uh, I think we'll be needing some help to set up uh, the hall for uh, this funeral. There may be uh, more people than uh, we usually have on Sunday morning, so we'll be needing uh, some support to uh, set the chairs and the hall, the hall for that service. Um, the other thing is, after, remember last week I mentioned uh, that this Sunday, um, Lindsay uh, uh, maybe will be speaking about half uh, a trip, uh, and so uh, after the first hymn, um, uh, she will be speaking about uh, all uh, plans, and so please listen carefully, and uh, I hope you remember that uh, we will have a retirement of things uh, to support uh, her. Uh, with that said, uh, I think most of the intimations are either in the back of it or up there, so please do read them. Let us now turn to uh, our call to worship. Our call to worship is taken from Paul's letter to Philippians, um, chapter 4. Uh, the page is mentioned, but if you want to follow it, turn to 250, page 250 in the New Testament. Chapter 4, only two verses, 6 and 7. Don't worry about anything, but in all your uh, uh, prayers, ask God for what you need. Always asking Him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ <coughs> Jesus. Amen. Let us now bow our heads and pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are of God and of Lord. And we can turn to you when we are in need. But we can also turn to you when we are thankful. Thankful for all the things that you continue to give us. Thank you for the food that we eat. Thank you for the home that we can stay in and uh, stay warm. We thank you for our friends, our family, those who care about us and those we care about. Lord, we thank you for each and everything. And above all, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Through him you show us who you are and what you Think of us. We are valuable to you through Jesus Christ. And so this morning we sit here with a thankful heart and we bring our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ that through him we are confident that you will hear every and each word that we utter here this morning. And we ask you to receive our prayers and bless us. Bless us through your word, read and preached. Bless us as we sit together and we share our news with each other. Let this time be a time of thankfulness, a time of praise, time of offering our lives to you. So Lord, forgive us for those times when we don't listen to you, we hurt each other through our words and our actions. We behave in a way that offends others. And then we hold grudges. Give us the spirit of forgiveness. And this morning, Lord, we want to 
forgive each other for those times when we were unthoughtful, uncaring. For this morning we say that you bless us through Jesus Christ in whose name we come to you. And in whose name we ask this, our Father in heaven, that will be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from you. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Now and Let us now sing the first hymn, I want to walk with Jesus Christ, and uh, as I usually say, if you are able to stand, you can stand, if you don't want to stand, there is no compulsion, so don't be obliged to do so, God can hear our praise, whichever way we offer, okay, let us sing together, I want to walk with Jesus Christ.
um, and I was chosen out of um, there's 26 pupils in sixth year going to um, Cape Town in February for 10 days. Um, it's a programme that the schools do um, called Cape Connections and we have like a link with the school in Cape Town, it's called Mount View. Um, so we go over there and we like meet them and we just talk to them and learn a bit about them and um, they don't really have a lot of resources and things so we kind of help raise funds for them and we go over and like um, take stuff to them as well like pencils and paper and books and things because we're trying to like help them build up their library as well. Um, yeah so we learn about their culture and we also like we do kind of presentations about East School Bride in Scotland so that they can kind of see what life is like here as well. Um, so each of the people that are going, including the teachers, are taking at least five books and then like um, pencils and notebooks and things and that's going to be like a third of everyone's luggage. Um, yeah, so the fundraising for the trip, um, we all need to like fundraise all of our money to like go over there for flights and accommodation and everything. Um, and then we have like, we do fundraising for the school so that they can build up their library and their resources and like hire more teachers and things. Um, and then the library is also already mentioned, so a lot of the money goes to the library, it's like our main focus just now. Um, and £25 can fund half of a school year for one student, so I like a very like, wee bit of money goes a really long way. Um, yeah, so I'm quite excited to go. I'll be good. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions about the trip, um, just come and talk to me and I'll like answer any questions you have. Um, I'd also like to say thank you for I did a bake sale a while ago and it went like a lot better than I thought it well. I thought it went quite well but <laughs> it went really amazingly well. So I'd just like to thank everyone a lot for that. Um, yeah, thank you. Good morning, boys and girls, young and old. I was told to tell a story today about when your back's against the wall. Now, that made me think, when your back's against the wall, who can we remember it? So, when your back's against the wall, who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. Who? Ghostbusters. Dear Lord, dear. I was thinking more like Lord God Almighty. So, when your back's against the wall, who are you going to call? Lord God Almighty. Lovely. Today, I've got two wee stories. One is about Sarah, and Sarah comes from Wishaw. Now she was driving through Glasgow to the airport on the M8, and you know there's three lanes on it. She was in the middle lane, and the old car went pop, pop, pop. Nothing else. So she thought, what am I going to do? I'm going to the airport to pick up my friends. I'm going to be late and I can't get out because there's cars wheeling by this side and wheeling by that side. Can't get out of my car. Where's my phone? I haven't brought my phone with me. So she thought, what will I do? So she closed her eyes, put her hands together, head down, Overboard, please save me. And she sat up, opened her eyes, and what do you think was in front of her? A big breakdown lorry. Flashing lights, everything. The driver got out, walked up to her door, managing to miss all the cars that were going by. She rolled down her window, because it was an old car. She rolled the window down, and the driver looked in and says, what's up? And she exploded everything. I'm going, I'm going to the airport to get my friends. The car's broken down, won't stop. And the driver put his hand on her shoulder and says, just relax. 
train started in Carnot. And she said, I calmness came over her when he touched her shoulder. She tried to start the car and it started. And the driver said, I'm going to Paisley myself. Follow me. Follow me. Her prayer was answered. She safely got her friends and got home. Now, there was a person in the Bible that had his back against a brick wall well and truly. His name was Daniel. Now, we're talking <coughs> 700 years before Jesus Christ this happened. He was living quite happily in Jerusalem. And King Nebuchadnezzar from Persia came down and raided Jerusalem and took him prisoner. Well, he didn't take him prisoner, he took him as a slave. But Daniel was a really clever man. He was known as a wise man. He could interpret dreams. Now, that is very difficult. Have you all dreamt? You dream the dream. I dream that I'm going to win lots of money and I can fix up the church. But that's another story. We dream sometimes they're not as easy to interpret. That is to decide what's happening. Why, why we dream, we don't know. But I'm going off on a tangent there and come back. So Daniel got back in and King Nebuchadnezzar looked at him and said, Right, I've got a special job for you. And all the other wise men that were round about this sort of, oh, wait a minute. He's just here and he's getting a special job. We'll need to do something about that. And they got together and they had a week to chat together. What are we going to do? Don't know what we're going to do. Well, we're wise men, we should know what we're going to do. So this idea, Daniel wants to please the king who got the idea. So the wise men went to the king. O king, O wise king, live forever. They couldn't say Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> they said that very well. We would like you to make a law that tells everyone to pray to only you or be thrown to the lions. Well, the king thought about this for a minute and he said, that's a good idea. He didn't know that they were trying to drop Daniel in the lion's den. Which did happen because they saw Daniel praying to God, to his God. So he went back to the king Nebuchadnezzar and said, O wise king, lives forever. We've got to tell you, we're really sad to tell you this, but we saw Daniel praying to his God and not to you, so you need to put him under the lions. So the king says, well, that's right, we've made the law, so you need to go under the lions. So the king said to him, Daniel, I'm really sorry about this, but you'll need to go under the lions. And they gave him a shot into the lions' den. <coughs> Now the lions hadn't been fed for three days and they were all starving. So the king went away back up, left Daniel in the den with the lions, away back to his bed and he lay all night. He tossed and he turned. And in the morning he went back to his better go and see how Daniel is. So he went up to the door of the den. Daniel, Daniel, are you still there? And Daniel replied, Yes, yes, the lions have not opened their mouths all night. I'm quite safe. There's not a scratch on me. Well, the king let out a whoop of joy. Whoop of joy. Let him out at once. And they did. So Daniel came out from the lions. Is that not a wonderful? story. And that's all written in the Bible. Every Bible has got that story in it. It's absolutely amazing. But there's a wee story there over and above. It tells us that God loves us. And if we talk to God, 
He will answer our prayers. Maybe not the way we want them to answer them, but he will answer them. So remember, when your back's against the wall, who are you going to call? Lord God Almighty. Excellent. Now, God loves and cares for us. He sent, his only, he sent his only son, Jesus, to us. And it tells us in the Bible, in John verse 16, For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. Is that not wonderful? Thank you. Children, can you tell me why why didn't lions eat Daniel? Right? Yeah? Well the thing is, one thing I remember, as a, a bit, bit of a, a story, uh, one time a man who was uh, very reluctant um, or very shy to speak and uh, he didn't have, you know, was always afraid to speak in front of people. And he was invited to one uh, party. There he went and they offered him free food and good food and said you can eat as much as you want. But one thing they didn't tell him. That after eating, he had to speak. Right? And so when he ate and then they asked him, can you now say something and speak? He said, had I known and after the food I had to speak, I would have refused. I think lions didn't eat uh, Daniel because they had to speak and of course they could, could, can speak. So, that's a huge joke. Right? So, but uh, I think Jim is right. It's, it's God Almighty who is there to, to keep us safe. So let us now sing together. And, uh, and the friend that we can turn to, that God showed who he is through Jesus Christ. He is the friend that we can turn to heaven with all our prayers. Okay, let's sing together Mission Praise number 746. What a friend we have in Jesus.
and children as you go to your Sunday school. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and our God and the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to be with you, with your families, with your teachers, now and always. Amen. <laughs>
last couple of weeks, we've been focusing on the life of Jacob, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. <coughs> on the surface, things seem a bit of a mess between family divisions and family rows. But as we look deeper into the life of Jacob, we see someone who understands the importance of being given the blessing of God's covenant, unlike his brother Esau. We see someone who matures in faith, learning to trust in God alone. We see forgiveness. <coughs> and at the very centre of this story, we see God, who throughout everything is in control. There have been arguments over the years about how Jacob received this blessing. Arguments for and against the moral standing that Jacob and his mother took. Some think that Jacob made a mistake and that he should have waited and allowed for God to act first in handing over the blessing to him. Others, though, think that both he and Rebecca were justified in light of the importance of the situation. After all, it was the blessing of God's covenant for future generations that was at stake. And God had previously told Rebecca that it was to be given to Jacob. So for them to stand by and do nothing would for them have seemed to be against the will of God and therefore not an option for them. Wherever anyone stands on this point, the important thing to remember is that it was always God's intention for the blessing of the covenant to fall on Jacob, and this it did. It ends up, though, with Jacob being gone for over 20 years, and not the short while that his mother had predicted when she sent him to live with her brother Laban. Eventually, though, <coughs> God instructs Jacob that it's time for him to go home, home to the land of his father and his relatives. God tells him that he is not to worry, and God promises him that he will be with him and that he will protect him. And so this is where we started off with our reading this morning. Jacob returning home <coughs> to face Esau. For Jacob, this is no easy journey. He wants to go home, but he's afraid. This meeting with Esau is weighing heavily on his mind. Does his brother still hate him? Does he still want to kill him for taking this blessing? These are valid questions and fears which have resurfaced from Jacob's past. Initially, Jacob thinks that he can win over Esau with gifts, hoping to buy back his brother's forgiveness with some of the wealth that he has acquired over the years. But in doing this, Jacob is forgetting one important thing. God's promise to protect him. Jacob simply needs to trust in God alone. But instead, he looks to see what he can do. Instead of trusting completely in what God has promised he will do. <coughs> At this moment, Jacob's biggest problem is himself. How many times have we thought that we could <coughs> sort out the problem without seeing that maybe... We are the problem. Our hardened hearts, our selfish ways, our refusal to forgive or seek forgiveness, our lack of faith. How many times could we have turned to God but chose to turn to others or ourselves instead? The wonderful truth about God though is that regardless of what has controlled our lives in the past, it's never too late to get our life on course and be part of God's plan. God allows us to start fresh at any point in our lives when we turn to him. And so it takes Jacob to get to the lowest point in his life for this to happen. This low point comes once Jacob hears that Esau is now on his way towards him with 400 men in tow. The dynamics have now changed. It's not now Jacob, Jacob going to Esau to bargain for his 
forgiveness is Esau charging towards Jacob with a whole army of men. Jacob's not a soldier or a hunter. He's a family man with livestock and servants. 400 men charging towards you is not the kind of welcome you expect when greeted by a, a friend or a family member. But it's the kind of welcome you expect from an enemy with a grudge to bear. Jacob is on his knees. His back is against the wall. He is terrified not only for his life, but for the life of his family. He has nowhere to run. He has nowhere to hide. And he has nothing else to bargain or negotiate with. All he has is this God who has been with him all his life. <coughs> and so it is now that Jacob turns to God and prays for help. Finally seeing God in his greatness and seeing himself as he truly is. Jacob's prayer speaks of his unworthiness and how only God is worthy. It speaks of how unfaithful he has been but how faithful God is. It speaks of God's goodness and how he started out with nothing, yet God has blessed him with everything that he has. He now remembers God's promise and asks God to save him from Esau. In Jacob's helpless state, he has finally turned to the only one who is able and who has been able to help him all along. The Bible then describes the strangest wrestling match in history. It says that a man came and wrestled with Jacob until daybreak. We later read that it's God that Jacob wrestled with all night. <coughs> this wrestle was the answer to Jacob's prayer. During this wrestle, Jacob learned, even at your most difficult moment, when God strikes Jacob's hip, that holding on to God and not letting go is the answer to life's problems. Jacob has now found in his broken state that his desire to know and rely on God personally is now the only thing that he wants and needs. His persistence and faith has pleased God and God's blessing is given to him. The humbling truth about God is that he patiently takes us as we are, staying faithful to us until we are finally won over. For Jacob, that was learning to turn from self to God. God answered Jacob's prayer, but not in the way that Jacob might have expected, but in a better way. <coughs> Not just sorting out his problem with Esau, but sorting out Jacob's bigger problem, which was with God's. This blessing was always meant for Jacob, but in order for God to use Jacob for his purpose, Jacob had to learn to turn from self-reliance to trusting and relying on God alone. <coughs> what does Jacob's story teach us? It teaches that God uses ordinary, imperfect people to do his will and in the process helps them transform their own lives when they submit their lives to him. It teaches that persistence in faith brings rewards and that in the end, only reliance on God is the answer. Above all, the story of Jacob teaches the sovereignty of God that everything is under his absolute control. <coughs> One more important aspect that the story of Jacob teaches is the importance of prayer. When in need, turn to God, for he can help. But not as our last resort, but as our first resort. After this experience, Jacob's life is transformed. He is still human. He is still imperfect, but his wrestle with God has changed him and changed his relationship with God for the better. 
Later on, we are told that Jacob, he goes back to Bethel, where he builds an altar to God, saying, I built this altar to the God who answered my prayers when I was in distress, the God who has been with me wherever I have gone. His relationship with God is now a personal one. He has struggled with God and with himself, and he has overcome. All of us, if we haven't already, should seek to find that Jacob moment in our own lives, that moment when our relationship with God turns personal. For Jacob, God is not now simply the God of Abraham and Isaac, but is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, as the scriptures say. He has learned that the only really important thing in life is to be blessed of God spiritually, trusting in him alone. As Christians, our blessings of God come through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who gave his life to bring the blessing of salvation to us. This is God's promise to us, and this is our destiny when we have faith in him. We, like Jacob, are unworthy of this gift, and yet God offers it to us. We, like Jacob, are untrusting and unfaithful, and yet God remains faithful to us. And we, like Jacob, are in need of God's grace and love, which he pours out freely on all of us. So as our call to worship the Son <coughs> reminds us, do not worry about anything, but in, but in all our prayers, ask God for what we need. Asking him with a thankful heart, remembering how blessed we are, for we have hope in eternal life through Jesus. This is no false hope that we hold on to, and it brings no small blessing either. For it is the blessing and promise of eternal life with our eternal God in his eternal kingdom. Which is why the scriptures tell us to hold on firmly to the hope that we profess. Because we can trust that God will keep this promise he has given to us. If there is one message that we, we can take away with us today, I think it would be this. That the real blessing a person should strive for in his or her life is not the material ones that we get in this life, in this world, but is the blessing and promise that we hold on to, like Jacob did, which comes from God through Jesus. As for the brothers Esau and Jacob, God kept his promise. For while Jacob was trying to think of a plan to fix things himself, God had been at work in both of their lives. Esau ran to meet Jacob, throwing his arms around him, kissed him, and they both cried. The forgiving power that God's Spirit brings on us heals wounds, and the courage to seek forgiveness when we make mistakes happens when we allow God's Holy Spirit to work in our lives, as the story of Jacob tells us. May our Heavenly Father, who is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, give us his blessing through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, and may we remain persistent in our faith in him. Amen. We will now continue this morning with our offering hymn, and it's from Mission Praise, hymn number <coughs> 173. <coughs>
Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you that you are a great God. God who is patient, who is merciful, who offers his grace unconditionally. This morning, we are reminded of this fact through this story. Lord, I thank you for your word and thank you <coughs> for caring and bringing this word to us. Reminding us of the greatest blessing which comes to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we ask you to help us to open our hearts to receive that. Receive that grace, that forgiveness which is only available through Jesus Christ. What a blessing we have. But there are many other blessings that you continue to give us. And we thank you for our life, for the blessing that we have. And in response to your love and grace, we bring these gifts to you and ask you to bless these gifts. Use them for your good. Use them to bring peace and comfort to those who mourn. We especially remember <coughs> the family of Vina. And we ask for your comfort for them. We also remember the families of those who lost their lives in this track and glory. Or oh, what a tragedy. <coughs> we don't know what happened, but we do know that you are the God of peace, God of comfort. So Lord, give comfort to those who have lost their loved ones. We also pray for all those who are mentioned in, in our intimations. All those who have asked for prayers, Lord, we bring them before you by name and ask your hand upon them. Be with them. Heal them. Physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We ask this all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> and let us now conclude our service this morning. Uh, I am at uh, uh, I like this is Mission Place 998, How Deep the Father's Love for Us.
your hearts that peace, peace that is beyond all human understanding. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit continue to be with you now and forever.